So in this segment, we're going to be talking about government's top lawyer, Suella Braverman, could change her legal advice for political reasons, senior Tory warns after major um, row. So he didn't mention Braverman specifically, but we kind of know he was talking about Braverman. Um, she's the only one who's actually done this um, recently, in my opinion, anyways. So the government's top lawyer risks ending up providing misleading advice to ministers for political reasons the former Justice Secretary had warned. Prime Minister Boris Johnson and his ministers have been accused of breaking the law multiple times in recent days over the Northern Ireland Protocol, which that's going to go to court, flights to Rwanda, which the ECHR stepped stepped in, and steel tariffs. The steel tariffs one's a bit confusing. Apparently the government want to put in steel tariffs in order to ha uh, help some sort of Tory donor. Um, that one's a bit unclear. Braverman, an MP who sits in the cabinet but also provides legal advice to the Prime Minister, has sometimes been relied on to give a legal sign-off on contentious plans. That's pretty normal. The AG normally is meant to get involved in this stuff. However, Robert Buckland, a former Solicitor General and Lord Chancellor, has launched a coded attack about Braverman's role in a new paper for the Institute of Government. So, without naming Braverman, he's saying, like, um, these are some of the issues that someone in her position could face. He wrote, a politician lawyer who prioritises being a politician is in danger of undermining their own legal expertise. Essentially, they would go against the um, the lawyer within themselves in order to give um, advice that would go against the law because they believe in politics over anything. Adding, law officers who, who prioritise politics fall, uh, fall into the immediate and more grave danger of not being true to their own ethos and their professional conduct as a lawyer, they adapt their advice to reflect the political priorities of their ministerial colleagues. And that would be, I think, one of the reasons why Braverman was picked to be AG. I don't think she has a ton of uh, legal experience in the UK, um, and also the fact that, you know, she probably was brought in to be a yes person, similar to what Sunak was envisioned to be, um, someone who just agreed with Johnson. The dangerous people then assume that the law officer will do whatever the government wishes when a good lawyer needs to be able to provide advice without fear or favour. And the other problem is that the Johnson could use her legal advice in order to get away with stuff and in the end she'll be the full person because she's the one who legally signed off on it. If you go to your lawyer and ask is this legal, it turns out it was not legal, you will be held liable, yes, but your lawyer could be potentially held liable for misconduct. Buckland contrasted this model of AG with previous incumbents such as Dominic Grieve and Jeffrey Cox, who's, um, whom he characterised as lawyer politicians, although he added these types could ignore the political context in which we all operate. Essentially, you know, this, these people could say, look, they can take the politics out of it and look at the rules of law and say, actually, what the government are doing is wrong. Raphael Hograff of the IFG committed Buckland does not mention any examples, but the incumbent Braverman seemed an obvious candidate. Braverman can often be seen in the TV studios battering for the prime minister, including on policy. You know, she called um, Robert Peston a Romaniac um, and she really went after him. Uh, it was ridiculous. Um, you got the Prime Minister's ethics advisor, Lord Guyte, resigning on Wednesday after being told, asked for his verdict on a proposal to break international trade law by imposing steel tariffs. It's currently unknown whether Braverman has also been consulted on that issue. Ministers are embroiled in a row over the policy of deporting asylum seekers uh, to Rwanda after the first schedule was blocked by the ECHR. And of course, you got the stuff on the Northern Ireland Protocol. In his paper, Buckland proposed a change in the relationship between the law officers of whom the AG is most senior and the government's legal department, which make would which would make them responsible for the lawyer's work and answerable to Parliament for um, how the department operates. And I think I think what should happen is the whoever the AG is of the day should have to publish their full legal opinion so Parliament can scrutinise it and therefore they can make they can vote on things properly without being worried about voting for illegal bits of legislation. I think that's what should happen. All all of the um, AG's advice, some of it, of course, they can't make public, but whatever, whatever uh, full advice she gives, you know, whatever her full ruling is, I think that should be made uh, public, unless there's national security issues, which they'll claim everything's national security. But you get my point. Stuff on the protocol, wherever she's advised on it, I think that should be made public um, so that at least people can understand why she said what she said. Because end of the day this is going to go to court and her stuff will be made public anyways um it's very it seems the case that they haven't actually consulted the government's independent barrister sir james eddie on some of the protocol stuff um which means that you know they haven't actually given been given the proper legal advice as to what to do but um anyways i'm gonna leave it there let me know what you think in the comments below like comment share subscribe support the channel on patreon if you can and hopefully i'll see you in the next one